So let's go and take a look at this example, guys. This has the sine of um, sine inverse of one half. Now, again, as I mentioned, it's very, very important for you guys to understand this. When we're using the sine inverse, we are looking for the angle. Our answer is going to be some angle, right? Of a triangle or on the unit circle, like whatever. It's going to be an angle. When you're using the sine inverse, you're looking for an angle. It's very important. I'll also let you guys know the default angle we're going to be looking for is radians. So give me your answer in radians, not degrees. All right? So when we're writing these answers, I'm going to look for the answer in radians. All right. Now, here's something I need you guys to understand. This can also be written like this. The sine of theta is equal to 1 half. So this is this exact same statement written in sine inverse notation. This is it written in sine notation. The sine of something is equal to 1 half. That means the sine inverse of 1 half is equal to theta. And again, like here comes my like, understanding here. Or you know, here's what I want you guys to take away from this. Remember when you solved equations, x plus 5 equals 3. The first thing you did was subtract the 3 on both sides. That because, that's because subtraction is the what operation of addition? Inverse. It undoes adding of 3. So we got x is equal to 2. right? So in the same idea here, if I want to solve for theta, I don't know what theta is, right? Because remember, sine inverse is finding the angle. I need to undo sine. Well, undo sine, we don't have an operation for that, like in terms of addition and subtraction. We, don't, we haven't learned that, right? So we can take the sine inverse. The sine inverse is going to undo sine, leave me just with theta, is equal to the sine inverse of 1 half. So I want you, everybody, to understand why these two equations are the same. Okay. Again, when you're using the sine inverse notation, guys, we're looking for the angle. Now, so basically I'm saying, when I see this equation, I'm saying what angle, the sine of what angle is equal to 1 half? So let's go to our unit circle. Well, I know that's going to equal here, at square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. That angle was pi over 6. And it equals, works over here at negative square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. And that angle was 5 pi over 6. So it looks like this satisfies this equation twice, at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So should I write down pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6? No, why not? You plug something in, you get two answers out, right? No, it's not. It's an inverse function. Right? There's only one answer. You plug something in, you're only going to get one unique answer out. So which one is it? Right? What is the correct answer? Well, again, go back to our restrictions. How did we restrict the angles for sine? The angles had to be between negative pi halves and pi halves. What is the only angle that fits that restriction? Pi over 6. There you go. Does that make a little 